I set up Baz OS on my own Steam Deck about a week ago, and you may be asking yourself, how's that going? And what are my thoughts on this entire journey? Was it worth it? It's been over a week since I've installed Baz OS on my own Steam Deck, formatting my entire internal hard drive to make room for this new OS. Installing Bazite wasn't difficult, but installation isn't as straightforward as one might think, especially on Steam Deck. You'll want to follow a guide. I've got my own video guide, as well as a text guide by the developers. You can't go wrong with either of them. Now let's talk about the negatives of Bazite OS. If you still have a 65GB eMMC drive in your Steam Deck, you cannot use Bazite OS due to an upstream bug. Having spoken with some in the community, it seems like it's an issue with Valve's 64GB drive, and only that drive. This is unfortunate given that Bazite OS is supposed to come with the latest version of Mesa, which is supposed to significantly reduce shader cache size. In turn, saving space on your 64GB eMMC drive. Secondly, there's currently a bug with the saturation slider. Currently, it works for some people, but doesn't work for others. There's also a bug that changes the vibrancy of your game whenever there's a SteamOS element that's present. This can be fixed by going into Settings, enabling Developer Mode, going into that Developer Mode, and enabling Force Composite. Now you can use this slider right here to change the saturation. There's also the fact that the Fedora installer doesn't explicitly tell you that Wi-Fi is needed to install Bazite in its current state. It seems like more of a limitation of the Fedora installer, which is unfortunate. They're also working on an offline installer, which will let you install Bazite without Wi-Fi. Good for those with slow internet connectivity. Frequent software updates do show up. It's to my understanding that they, for lack of a better word, hijack the update system to not only update Steam, but also Bazite as a whole and any flat packs you may have installed. It is a cool feature that they managed to integrate all of the like OS updates into Steam's updater system, but I think it does need some more polish. Like when I update my system all the way, like I install the update and then I restart my hardware, it shouldn't prompt me for another update. That's some Windows stuff. That said, this isn't really a harmful bug or anything. It doesn't affect my ability to play games, so it's a minor issue. Soundtracks don't show up in my games list and I own more than a few soundtracks on Steam. The soundtrack tab still shows up in the quick access menu. There's even a browse soundtrack shortcut, but it doesn't take you anywhere. I don't really listen to soundtracks on Steam, but it is worth mentioning. Ultimately though, this is all small stuff. Bringing up all these bugs isn't me trying to tear down the Bazite team, it's to help them so that they can hopefully fix all of these issues that they may or may not have experienced themselves. So what about the positives? What does work on Bazite compared to SteamOS? Well, let's start with SteamOS functions in particular. The refresh rate slider works. I can't really convey it through my capture card, but I have confirmed that it works portably. It functions practically identically to SteamOS. The vibrancy, or I guess saturation slider, does work when you apply that fix that I mentioned earlier. In the future, force composite shouldn't be necessary. TDP and GPU sliders work as expected. As do per game performance profiles, the Deki plugin loader works as expected. Heck, Bazai can install it for you if so desired. I can confirm CSS loader works. I can confirm audio loader works. I can confirm Steam Grid DB and Proton DB plugins work. But ultimately, there's no guarantee that every plugin works. I've heard reports that Power Tools doesn't work properly. Some plugins may not work as expected, but truth be told, there's so many plugins I couldn't possibly test them all. Sleep mode works. I can press the power button, go to sleep. Press the power button again, wake up where I was before, and continue to play games. I haven't had any explicit compatibility issues with games. There hasn't been a single game I've tried out that worked on SteamOS that doesn't work on Bazite. That said, I am limited to my own library. Games with Steam Deck exclusive features, like Cyberpunk's Steam Deck presets, those also show up in Bazite as well. And Steam Deck tutorials. There's a lot of questions as to whether or not something that works on SteamOS will work on Bazite. It really depends on what you're trying to do. For Deki and Emu Deck, Bazite offers to install both of those for you. What about installing Flatpaks? Well, Flatpaks are made to be installed on just about every Linux distro that supports Flatpaks, which of course includes SteamOS and Bazite. Installing Flatpaks is just about the same as it is on SteamOS. 
but mostly if you're using the KDE version of Bazite. I couldn't tell you about the GNOME version of Bazite, to be honest. Now, what about Cryo Utilities? It's to my understanding that Cryo Utilities doesn't officially work on Bazite, but many of the tweaks that Cryo offers, Bazite does already. Not to mention, the default setting for Bazite is to use ZRAM instead of swap, so Cryo Utilities changing the swap file doesn't work when you're using ZRAM, obviously. Downloading games works as expected, and if you've got a deck formatted SD card, that just works. Though should you decide to format your SD card in Bazite's game mode, it will format it as ButterFS instead of EXT4. Unless you've set up ButterFS on your Steam Deck, your Steam Deck will not be able to read Bazite formatted SD cards by default. And speaking of ButterFS, it's time to talk about it. Bazite comes with a Steam mod that basically formats your SD card in ButterFS. ButterFS is an alternative file system. It's got a number of benefits that benefits all sorts of applications, such as servers or workstations. The primary benefit for the Steam Deck, however, is compression. You will save quite a bit of space. The biggest downside, of course, is the lack of case folding. Case folding ensures lowercase and uppercase letters are the same when it comes to naming files. There are some weird cases where case insensitivity helps with certain Windows games, but those are somewhat rare. And of course, Wadroid support. Some consider this a killer feature of Bazite. That said, setting it up currently is kind of a pain in the butt, and they're redoing the entire system to make it a lot easier for new users, so I could make a video about it, but it's going to be outdated real soon. I haven't extensively tested Wadroid yet, but some games do work, and others don't. So how is Bazite? Well, Bazite does work. My top use case for the Steam Deck isn't to do my daily work or, you know, do schooling or anything of the sort. It's to play video games. I only play video games on my Steam Deck, and Bazite works. For all of the games I do actually play, I haven't noticed any performance loss. Though to be fair, I've only really played two somewhat intense games, Cyberpunk 2077 and Armored Core 6, neither of which showed any significant performance dips or increases really. But yes, like most other softwares, Bazite has bugs, some of which may actually originate from Steam itself. So it ain't perfect. But remember, SteamOS itself was really buggy to begin with. And to answer all of your questions, should you or should you not install Bazite on your Steam Deck? If you were fine with Steam Deck at launch, then you would be even more fine with Bazite. There's a good chance that I'm just going to stay on Bazite until I find a super game-breaking issue. Like, a really bad issue. As for the average user, the less technologically savvy user, you can stay on SteamOS if you want to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. 